It was great to see so many of you in church this morning. And as we start a new week, I want to begin by thanking Alec for last week's daily devotions. It was so helpful to come back to the Lord Jesus and to ask, as his disciples did, Lord, teach us to pray. And we need to pray. And prayer is no easier or more natural just because we're locked in. But our current situation certainly is a good reason to ask, Lord, teach us to pray. Keep praying to our Father in heaven. Well, I thought this week we would stay with the basics, because just as we need encouragement to pray and not to give up, so we need encouragement to dwell in the scriptures. I hope that reading God's word is a part of your daily life. If it isn't, then today is a great day to start. If you've not read the Bible by yourself before or for a long time, why not start by reading John's Gospel? We were working through it at the 10 o'clock service before the lockdown, and we're continuing to do so at online church until Easter. Join us each week as we do that. In the meantime, you could head over to BibleGateway.com and search for the book of John in an easy-to-read English version like the NIV or the Good News and just read it for yourself. In John's Gospel, John records Jesus praying to his heavenly Father for his disciples. He prays this, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. According to Jesus, God's word is truth. And by God's word, he meant both what we call the Old Testament, everything that God said to prepare us for Jesus' coming, and the New Testament, all that God said about Jesus once he had come. And we learn from Jesus' prayer that we don't read God's word as a religious duty, it's not a textbook or a history book or a newspaper or a rule book. No, it is the means by which we come to know God. He is the Holy One, the Sanctified One. To sanctify someone is to set them apart, to belong to and to be devoted to God. And Jesus says the way that happens, the way we come to belong to God and to be devoted to him, is through the Word of God. And this is not merely a personal or spiritual experience. In the very next verse, Jesus prays, As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. God brings us to himself through his word, and through that same word, equips and calls us to serve him in the world, to speak and live in love and in truth. In other words, if you want to know God, and if you want to be useful to God, then the means of both is the word of God. Listen to meditated upon, prayed through, lived out, supremely received, believed, and obeyed. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Now, all of this is by way of introduction to the great psalm of praise to the word of God that is Psalm 119. We won't spend long here today. At the start of our week, I wanted to remind you why, as Jesus' disciples, we should delight in the Word of God and depend upon it with our whole being, those being the repeating themes of this psalm. Let me read you a few verses from the opening two paragraphs. If you wanted to pause this video and read verses 1 to 16 of Psalm 119, that would be great, but you don't have to. Verse 1. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. To be blameless is not to be sinless and perfect. It is to be sincere. It is to pray and to mean it, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. We cannot pray that unless we are committed in principle to walking according to the law of the Lord, living under the authority of God's King who speaks in his word. And yet we who pray, hallowed be your name, must also pray, forgive us our sins. Also here is the same pattern in the psalm, verses 5 and 6. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. The psalm ends all the way up in verse 176 with confession, and we'll get there, God willing, on Friday. But it's here at the start as well. If you open the scriptures and open your heart, you will quickly lament your own sin. We are not steadfast in obedience. We need the Lord's mercy to cover our shame, mercy that is freely and fully available in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet God's word is 
a powerful means of our sanctification. Again, remember Jesus' prayer in John 17. We'll now look at verses 9 through to 11. How can a young man, or indeed a young woman, or an old man, keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Here is God's word as our teacher, as our hedge to keep us from straying, as God's own inward power to make us holy. And just listen to the verbs used in prayer in verses 12 through to 16. Praise you, O Lord, teach me. I speak, I rejoice, I meditate, I consider, I delight, I will not neglect. God's word is living, precious, active. You want to know the Lord and be useful to him today? Well, Jesus says that it's God's word that sanctifies us and sends us. Let the psalmist encourage you to do that today and into this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please grant that we would walk according to your word and so find your blessing. Sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. And as you sent your Son into the world, so send us to love, speak, live and serve for your glory alone. For we ask it in his name. Amen.